Uh, studying overseas has been the biggest dream of many people, especially people from the developing countries. People are looking for opportunities to go to study in the United States of America, to study in Canada, to study in New Zealand, Australia, and Europe. Those are the prime destinations for many people. Also, some other people, they want to go to Asian country. Some people, they want to go to Japan, China, South Korea, and other countries. Uh, but there are different levels of education. Uh, bachelor's, master's, doctorate, postdoctoral studies. But there is a very big group of people who are looking for bachelor's degree or undergraduate studies. So this video, I want to dedicate a little bit of time to explain in detail what does that mean if you are looking for opportunities to study for bachelor's degree or rather we can say undergraduate degree studies or undergraduate degree. So welcome everyone, this is Ernest Boniface Makurilo, EBM from EBM Scholars, talking to you from my home office here in Belton, Missouri, United States of America. So when you want to start, there are two ways. The first way is to apply as self-financing student. That means you want to go to those countries to study, but who is responsible for the tuition, fees, and living expenses? You will be your own, or whatever will be your relative, or your business, I don't know, but we call self-financing students. But the problem is, majority of you are not in a position to pay for all those costs. In this video, I will talk at the end of the video, in case you want to study a self-financing student, which countries are very good for you? One, in terms of saving the money, but two, in terms of uh, immigration, friendliness, and opportunities right after studying uh, in that particular country. But the second part of this video, I'm going to talk about the issue of if you are going to study uh, as someone receiving financial support uh, from the university you are going to study or from the government or from any other institutions paying for you to go to study. In other words, you are going to get scholarships. Whether the scholarships be partial or full, I will talk in detail. But I know majority of people who are looking to study overseas for whatever level they are focusing more on how can they be in a position to get the scholarships some people they can call it fellowships or it can be assistantships whatever name it is but in the end another person another institution another organization is responsible for tuition fees and other related expenses for you to be able to pursue your studies in that particular country so in most of the videos i've been saying this statement it is practically difficult listen and quote me very careful it is practically difficult for you to be able to get scholarships for undergraduate studies but it is not impossible i want you to quote me well and i'll give you my opinion what should you do to reach your dream so the first thing let's discuss about uh why am i saying it is difficult for someone to get full funded programs for undergraduate studies or rather bachelor's degree. It is very simple. Let's go back to find why are these countries give thousand, thousand, thousand of dollars for one individual to leave their country, to leave the country, maybe from Tanzania, from Ghana, from Nigeria, whatever country you are from to go to study in Sweden, to go to study in Australia, to go to study in America, to go to study in Canada. Why? Why can't they take 50,000 and give to 50 students to study in Nairobi, to study in uh, Accra, Ghana, to study in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, or at the University of KwaZulu-Natal? Why is it difficult? Why they don't give priority for people to study in their own countries for their bachelor's degree? Or just overall for their own degrees 
you have to know that when they give you scholarships to come to study in these countries, there is also a way where they are going to benefit. I don't want to go into two details. These are the benefits all over for them for you to come. But just in overall, when they give you scholarship, they expect you to have a positive contribution to the university you are going, to have a positive contribution to the hosting community or to the city where you are going or even to the country overall when you are going. So, not many people from America or from Canada have the opportunity to travel to Tanzania, have opportunity to travel to Ghana, have opportunity to travel to Zimbabwe, to South Africa, to South Sudan, to Philippines, whatever country it is. So for that particular case, if you come here, it's just for you, you come here as ambassador of your country. That means they know for sure there are so many people to be able to benefit from you being here. That can be for anybody, whether you have a bachelor degree, master's or PhD. So that is not the reason why there are very few scholarships for bachelor's degree. The number one reason why there are so uh, very few opportunities for bachelor's degree is the language of instructions. Remember, English language is not the language where everybody speaks in all the countries as the mother language or the national language. If you go to Sweden, Swedish is the national language. If you go to Norway, Norwegian is the national language. If you go to Netherlands, they speak Dutch. If you go to Germany, they speak German. So, all those countries where English is not the national language, it's not the mother tongue of the people, it means the language of instruction, the medium of instruction from kindergarten to bachelor's degree, it is strictly their languages. If you go to Norway, that will be the case. Yes, there will be few programs which you can study in English, but in general, the programs will be from primary school or elementary school to a bachelor's degree in their own languages. That makes the programs, uh, the countries with the national language is English and which provide scholarship are very few. Half of Canada or 75% of Canada because Quebec is speaking French. You are talking about entire UK, Ireland, Wales, whatever. All those ones that speak English, you are talking about Australia, New Zealand, United States. Very few countries. So for that particular case, you reduce the number of scholarships. But if you go for graduate studies, masters, PhD, postdoctoral, you will find out there are so many countries, or even if the language of the, the, the mother tongue is not English, they teach or they have more programs in English language in those countries. You can go to Sweden and study masters or PhD in English language using English language. But for instance, in Norway, you can find that there are maybe 10 programs, not 10 universities, 10 programs in entire Norway which are in bachelor degree in English language, but the all universities, are, almost all, they have programs in Norwegian for bachelor degree. So that is the number one problem. So don't waste your time that I must go to find the scholarships in Norway or Sweden for bachelor's degree. Yes, you might find it, but there are very, very few. So why don't you, why do you need to waste your time? While you're wasting your time, I'll give you the solution, what you need to do while you apply for these programs, what you need to do in your own country. So the reason number one is the language of instruction or medium of instruction of those countries makes difficult to have more opportunities for many countries. Second reason why there are very few programs uh, or scholarships in English, I mean, for undergraduate studies is the fact that these countries, as I said, they benefit. Uh, if you go as someone studying master's degree or PhD, they believe for sure if you finish studies, you go back to your home country, you'll have a bigger impact in your country. The purpose of you being given a scholarship to come to these countries, they believe that you are going to gain something and then you return to your home country. That's why in the statement of purpose you have to explain, you will be returned back to your home country and what are you going to do. So just go to Tanzania, go to Kenya, go to most of the countries in Africa. There are so many opportunities for someone to study bachelor's degree in their own countries than going for master's and PhD. Because bachelor degree, you can get a loan, most of the countries, they have government loans, student loans to go there. Or they might have other programs depending on the country to be able for many people to study bachelor's degree. But masters, they know for sure, is extra, but is more specialized 
uh, if you study that one, you can be having a very sophisticated impact and a bigger impact in your community than someone in bachelor degree where already you have so many bachelor degree in your own country. Assume someone comes here to study PhD and goes back to the to 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 to, to your country's Ghana. They assume that the impact will be bigger. Let's say if it's teaching at the university, than you come here to study my bachelor degree of political science. What impact are you going to bring? Yes, I believe you have impact, but if you see the magnitude, someone with masters or PhD, they think that they will have that one. But another reason is, for instance, this will be more specific for the United States. Uh, they have what they call assistantships, meaning you come here, you assist certain jobs in the academic arena, then you are going to be given tuition, fees, and living expenses that are going to cover certain that, the amount of that. So if that is the case, there is a problem if you bring someone for bachelor's degree. What the academic contribution the person will be able to do? Will someone in the bachelor degree be able from day one to support uh, being seminar, like a seminar leader, tutorial assistant, marking the exams, be there as assistant, uh, uh, assisting academic work, doing the research? No, it is impossible. That's why they take it, masters and PhD because they have what is called assistantships rather than the full scholarship where you are given the money even if you go to sleep and study. But in the US, you have to work 20 hours per week in academic arena in most cases to get what they call assistantship in some of the countries we call seminar leaders ota tutorial assistant here they can call teaching assistant or research assistant or graduate assistantships so that is also limiting number of scholarships in america for people to come to study bachelor's degree and another thing uh, it comes to the number of years of study. You come to the United States, bachelor degree is four years. Master's is mostly two years or one year. I studied my master's degree for one year. Uh, in Europe, bachelor degree, most of the universities is three years, few four years. But again, uh, master's is two years, one year to two years in most of European countries. PhD is three years. So if uh, the cost of living, when they give you bachelor or master's, the living expenses of Oslo, they doesn't care whether you are you are you are doing bachelor or master's, the living expenses are the same. You'll get the same apartment. So you can find out amount of the money will be more or less the same. So let's say they give you one thousand and five hundred. So why should they give one thousand and five hundred for someone to come to study bachelor degree three years? Why they can do uh, they can bring three students and make them get start, get the money for living expenses for three years, well, one year, masters, one year, masters. so within three years they can have three students for masters than one student for masters bachelor degree. Or in the US you can bring two students from Africa, they can do, uh, do one master after two years, you bring another one two years, so four years you have two students, but in four years for undergraduate you have one student. So if you do the math, if you want to, to have bigger impact in many countries, to have more scholarships, so for masters it will be a little bit better to have more opportunities than the bachelor's degree. And then when you go to the PhD, yes, if it will be three to four, five years, but yes, it can be three years like bachelor or master's, or it can be four years for PhD like a bachelor degree, but the impact as consultant, as a research, as, a, as, a, as an instructor or lecturer in your country is huge compared to bachelor degree. So those are some of the reasons why we have a limited number of scholarships for bachelor's degree. I haven't said that we don't have those scholarships. So, for instance, in the United States, I've talked about this Berea College over and over. I'll put the link below on this description of this video so that you can be able to figure out that there are scholarships. Berea College is one of the colleges in the United States which provides 100% scholarships for international students. But they take about 30 students each year out of 300 applicants from all over the world. So you need to make sure that you apply a lot. So you cannot just wait, let me apply for Berea and I'm not studying in my own country. Because if you apply for this year, you apply for this year to go to study next year in August. So you cannot apply this year to wait for next year for one university only. What if you don't get it? You lose that year, so you have to apply again next year for the year after, so you are wasting two years. If you are already studying in your own country, it could be the second year. Either if you are in the three-year program, you are about to finish, or if you are four-year program, you are waiting for two years to graduate. So while you are studying, you can apply for bachelor's degree. But don't you stop, I'm waiting for scholarships, while you don't have even anything at, on your hand.
So just start studying in your own country first while you're applying for scholarships for bachelor's degree because there are very, very few. Yes, there are very few scholarships in Australia. There are very few scholarships in Canada. There are very few scholarships in New Zealand for undergraduate studies. I'll put some of these in the links. I'll just go and search them and post them here. You can be able to see them and you can be able to access them. But for those who want to go as self-financing student to pay for their own, I advise you not to go to the countries which are very expensive in terms of the tuition and the fees. If your aim is to really go to study in that particular country, Yes, there are very, very few programs in English language, in, for instance, in Norway, in Finland, in uh, Sweden. But education in Scandinavia is free of charge. There is no tuition and fees. But if you come to the United States, you are paying maybe 20,000 tuition and fees. And then you have to find 10,000, 12,000 for the cost of living, living in that particular area for one year. So it takes at least 30,000. But if you go to most of the Scandinavian countries, you don't pay that 20,000. You need to have 12,000 in your bank account. You give them on the bank account to, give, to, get, the, uh, to get admission, to get the, uh, the bank statement from the university. And then once you go there, they give back your money and you can work and you can be able to survive. So if you're looking for studies, it will be better for you to go to uh, Norway and other Scandinavian countries. I already made the video about Norway and explained about how we can go about it. And also the list of the universities in Norway with bachelor's degree in English language, I post them here. But overall, find a way to study bachelor degree, first of all, in your own country. And master's, because there are so many master's programs all over the world, as scholarships. But even if you are, still, you are still planning to apply for bachelor degree, start studying bachelor degree in your own country. Because if you have poor grades in your own country, you cannot be admitted. Why will you be given scholarships? To study in Berea. Why will you be given scholarships to go to study at Stanford? If you don't, you cannot be able to play into the local league of Kenya, to Machakos FC, to play for Simba or younger football teams in Tanzania, in those small leagues, or to play for Enyimba in Nigeria, you cannot play for Enyimba. How can you play for Real Madrid or Barcelona? So you have to have very good grades to be able to be eligible to get good programs in your own country first in order to compete at the international arena. So don't say, oh, I got all these and I'm looking for scholarships overseas. Why you cannot be even admitted in your own country? Let's be real. Let's be honest. Let's be realistic on this situation. So don't look for scholarships in overseas while you don't have even qualification to go to the university in your own country. If you cannot go in your own country to be admitted, how can you compete with the entire world from all countries to go to these universities? So those are the things I want to make sure you understand in detail about the bachelor's degree. I'll put the link of the Berea, I'll put the link of Norway, and I'll put the links of other programs which are fully funded for an undergraduate. But remember, you have also to apply to code as if this one doesn't work to continue to study in your own country so that you cannot lose, you cannot waste many years waiting just for scholarships. Thank you so much, everyone. Remember to share this video to others, share to your parents, share to your friends, share to your colleagues. Thank you so much.